So let's get started for today. I have three pieces to go through, three really beautiful pieces, um, and hopefully I do them justice. And uh, I wanted to talk about a variety of things. So there really isn't any specific theme for today, really just going through all of them. Since my Instagram kind of blew up, I have been trying to do more than one critique per class, trying to see how much I can pull off with as little time as possible. And this is how I usually critique with my patrons. My patrons upload up to 15 pieces and I critique them all in an hour. Those are really fast and... Um, like three, four minutes each, um, and then the, the lesson is followed followed after that, or before that actually, but these pieces I can actually spend maybe 15 minutes each. So let's start with this one. So uh, I'm not gonna touch the style, I'm not gonna touch the lines, I'm not gonna touch anything. I am gonna touch what is still in my jurisdiction as the viewer, not as the teacher or an artist, as the viewer. Things that style can't shield you from. Things that hiding behind a skirt of style does not relieve you from, which is basic core skeletal anatomy. That is something style does not replace. Style doesn't reinvent the skull of the human body, like the skull. So write that back to me. Scott, uh, style doesn't reinvent human anatomy. Style enhances and exaggerates human anatomy, but the source of origin is still the same meaning that we still need a jawline that is generally functional. We can exaggerate the width of features on this angle. We can do that. That's what style says we can do. But everything else doesn't make much sense. So what I'm going to do is just make it so his chest, he's just standing normally. Um, and we're just seeing the side of his body. All right, and his shoulder is right there. I'm going to use all the grooves and wrinkles of the shirt to show his shoulders. And I'm just trying to show the convex shape of his rib cage. And I'm trying to show where his shoulder line is. Okay, I'm going to try to give his chin some length. And I'm gonna to try to give his neck some length as well. So you'll see the before, how you tried to force two different perspectives on us and it wasn't working. Okay, so before, before, after, before, where did the chin go? Where did the mandible go? Where did the jawline go? What's with this other shoulder? Why are we seeing this other shoulder? Why is it so important that it needs to be here, but only in like percent of its, of it, or like as a sliver of its actual scale? Just don't show it then. And I'm gonna zoom all the way out to try to get the size of his torso to match his body by creating a flatter line for the chest as if it ends off screen, making his upper body look and feel a bit more matured and matching his head size. So anatomy doesn't care about style. Anatomy needs your style, uh, or your style, sorry, your style needs your anatomy intact. And I'm going to just place the ear here. Okay, so before, after, before, after. Your character, even if it's an anime character, still needs the chin. This is why I'm saying we want to keep the anatomy intact. It's still a skull. The style didn't make us exempt, make, make you exempt from studying anatomy. In fact, style needs you to study anatomy more than the regular student because at least the regular student has realistic edges and realistic textures and form. You are sacrificing textures to keep your style and to keep your line. Before, after, before, after, before, after. Okay, <clears throat> other things would be the amount of hair he has. When we zoom out, we, it's still a lot of hair. So I would zoom out and then just tuck in some of that hair. It is boy hair after all. It's not all this extra volume. 
If it's a girl, that's their story. I wouldn't know. To be honest, it's not my responsibility to keep track of every single unique story of every character posted in this Reddit. But um, from what I'm seeing, it's it's a boy cut. Classic standard boy cut. All right. And then I'm just giving that bit of a crown at the top, a flat head. So just a little less oversizing of the head. All right. And I like how you drown the whole piece in some light. I do not like the crop. So whenever I change crops, I have a bit of an issue because the before and after doesn't match up. So what I'm going to do is do the before and after now and then show you the crop. So before, after, before, after and then what I want to do is just show you how the character needs to be more in the center of the canvas okay they were off to the side it's a very symmetrical scene really nothing unique happening in the background and then I just want to show how you could just bring in some drowning light of some kind from above you've already done quite a bit of that so there's nothing much I'd want to change in that regard, but I feel like you have a lot of gold, a lot of colors that are really um, analogous. They're not uh, in opposition in any way. So what I mean is the cools don't have cold in them and the warms have too much yellow in them. They don't have a lot of white in them. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to cool down part of the canvas um, just a touch so that the, the highlights really, really pop. Okay, so I cooled down those oranges, but I kept the orange of the highlight. And then I'm keeping the orange, uh, the general orange of the top half of the canvas. So like we get a little bit more coolness. All I did was change the temperature of the areas that are in shadow and that that went a long way if you feel like it's too dark now there's not much i can do um and then there is the rim light you have rim light traveling all around the character but none of that rim light is reaching the hair as well so is is the light above or is the light behind him i'm just a little confused So shouldn't that rim light travel all the way around his hair? His hair is actually getting light, right? Because it's see-through. Not see-through, but hair lets in a lot of light in between the strands, which is where we get some of that color. And then I'm just going to grab this new red that Dodge Tool gave me, and I'm going to create a boundary of red around the shadow or the area where we do have light right here around every saturation around every highlight there's a saturation marker it's like a little boundary of redness and it's like the mid-tone saturates at different degrees just outside the highlighter it's like a glow that comes from borderline meaning the actual borderline border light borderline subsurface scattering there's light underneath and then I'm just going to change this temperature to be a little less red. And that should go a long way for just completing the realism of the light environment. Letting some of that red kind of travel in and around other areas of the scene just on the outside. Seems to do something for that light pattern, which is that borderline highlight. And you can also make his nose just a bit more red just to show that there is translucency there in his in his values in his skin so before after so i moved his position in the canvas because he was too shifted over but i don't like before and afters that are not lined up i just something about them just pisses me off so <laughs> before after because you don't really get to see the real change in the anatomy you're too busy seeing the shift in the canvas do you know what i mean before 
after. The chin wasn't there. The rotation of the torso was not anatomical. The rotation of the torso was not anatomical. And the light source wasn't consistent all around. So we needed a little bit more drowning light. I also cooled down the shadows so it's less monochromatic. And I brought in some extra little haze values uh, where the light is glowing out. Okay, moving on. Um, let's go. So I want to take a look at this one next. Uh, so this one, you said that the eyes were confusing you. Honestly, I, I'm not sure what where you're... It's just a pinup, right? It's a pinup drawing. So with this pinup drawing, there's almost no environmental value. She's under a tree, but she's still illuminated as if the light is hitting her directly. From what I'm seeing, the light is behind her. This big beam of light is right behind her. So what do we do when a light is behind a character? We apply a silhouette. We can't apply a pure silhouette because it's still daytime, but it's daytime under a canopy. Write that back to, write that back to me. Uh, daytime under a canopy means that there is, um, there's still daylight saturation, but there's just a slight presence of shadow colors, the ones I just used on that sunlit boy just now. And so what I'm going to do is create two zones, the shade zone and the outside world zone. Oops. Um, and so that means that one area will be slightly cooler than the other. So this, these changes should go by pretty quickly. These are just environmental changes. So I'm just going to save my lasso, select inverse, um, and see if I can, wait a second, wait a second. Okay, there we, there we don't go. That's not, okay. So what I'm going to do is find a cool value. It's not quite purple. It's kind of like a daytime blue. It's kind of like a sky blue that's gray. It's not a nighttime blue that's a purpley blue navy. It's a daytime blue that's grayish. And I know you may hate this color, but it's actually going to do a lot for us. So we're going to put that on darken. And we're going to reduce the highlights on it. We've changed the temperature. It's still daytime, but it's daytime in a canopy. We don't have as much of that cheesy value. Another thing you could do is change the temperature so you don't need less. So you need less of the darken. You can go to the scroll and you can change less of, bring in less of that saturation. So we're desaturating her and we're shifting her over into the cool values. So take a look at that. Less of that cheesy orange. A lot of cheesy orange today, huh? Um, so this is daylight with a canopy, meaning we're in the shadow side. We're in the shade. And suddenly it just looks realistic. Explain that. It doesn't make any sense. Like we're reducing value and we've totaled the whole colors under one consistent wash. Darken mode and a blue gray wash. And suddenly everything just makes sense. Do you guys see that? Because these levels of saturation, this redness, this redness, this pink doesn't make sense in a shadow. Shadows don't have light in them. Light feeds saturation. Why are there saturated values in a shadow? This is breaking the laws of physics. So what we did is we reduced the saturation. We cooled down the values in the shadow. So now things are making more sense. But we do have areas that still have light. Okay, so what are these areas? Well, they are the areas that have some kind of rim light. They are all of these like kind of lit up areas right here where we get her that auburn color in her hair to come through. By the way, look up another hairstyle. This looks like a really bad soccer mom hairstyle that's done for like 20 bucks at the salon. Quick blowout. Like it, it does not look like something a she beast like her would have. Try something else with the hair. It's so boring. It doesn't inspire warrior energy. It just inspires soccer mom energy. Um, just being honest with you as a girl who does her hair like it just looks like something that you learn off a YouTube video and it, like you know you're not so good at it. it I'm not saying you don't have you know like a good understanding of, of how to render hair I'm saying the 
the hairstyle is so boring. Um, especially because look at all this shit's going on. Like it's apocalyptic. We got some crazy shit. And then she just got soccer mom hair. Doesn't work. Um, so then we're going to areas that are illuminated by the light. So this back arm, this area gets resaturated because this arm is right under that light. Um, all of this here, we get some of this environmental green and we use it under everything in that back arm because it's getting all that bounce light. And delete. Okay. And there's just, there's just a lot that's, that's now accessible to us because we darken the scene. So see that back arm feels a little bit more realistic. And you need to start bringing in that green in more than just the arm. That green is the forest. And so that same green, I'm going to bring it in for the thigh as some kind of bounce light. All right, this is the environmental color that skin will reflect because skin has reflective properties. So a reflective surface, it's got oil, it's, it's a sleek organ, so it's not really something you'd say is so coarse, it can't reflect anything. And I'm using that reflector value on all these sides that face the green inside the canopy. I'm also going to get burn tool and burn on mid-tones the side of her figure that is rejecting the majority of the light into a pocket, into this pocket of her torso. Meaning that now we have a complete cylinder. Okay, and then that same redness in this thigh, I'm bringing it in into and in this leg i'm bringing it in for this thigh this thigh should be getting a lot of light and i'm going to get dodge tool on highlights and illuminate this thigh as well since it's slightly breaching into wherever that light is coming from so now that we took care of some of the environment some of it because there's still so much i'm not comfortable with for instance um this entire foreground needs not a sil it's not a, a value correction it's just a whole silhouette but i can't do it like this um i mean i would love to this is so cool S adds so much more like spirit to the scene um let me show you what it does but i do have to add ambient occlusion at some level so i'm going to erase what's on that far arm i'm going to erase what's on this leg and in front of this piece of armor. I'm going to erase any bounce light I added earlier so that I'm left with the terminator. Okay. I need to make sure this blade stays reflective. I need to erase some of that and some of that. So I'm left with this like centralized shadow where we're rejecting a lot of light around the middle of the torso. Most of the light rejection is happening in the middle of the torso. And it just gets more and more realistic the more light you reject. Isn't that crazy? But because students are so hell-bent on showing every last thing, they break the rules of physics and wonder why their drawings look flat. Students have this thing that they have to unlearn. Who knows where they learn it from? Probably from, you know, the world and ob observing the world light lets me see things my character is important i want to see my character i will make my character brighter than they need to be it just must be that type of thought process because almost always the characters are overly lit and i'm just going to illuminate this back area oh i was not in lasso my bad Select inverse. I'm just going to illuminate this back arm area right here and illuminate some of this and some of that light is bouncing on that and bring in a little bit of subsurface scattering on this part of her arm, her, her part of her torso, and maybe a bit more light on her thigh.
Okay. <clears throat> so in the end, I'm not really going to keep this much light on her thigh since there's going to be a kind of a canopy shadow for the lower half of the canvas. But until then, I'm just going to keep that thigh getting some light. I'm going to bring in some of that light saturation there. All right. So now all that's left is this tree. And I just want to make sure the tree is nice and dark and makes sense. So it's going to be easy. It's just the same exact thing. Find that pale blue gray and I'm going to put it on darken and I'm just going to darken this tree. And I'm going to get that black and put it also on darken and just darken the tree. But I still want the tree to keep its color, so I'm just going to try to find a balance between all of that and just keep the tree colored. Wherever the tree had light bouncing off of her, the tree will get some extra illumination. So right here would be the bounce light of the tree just on this side and the tree would be generally darker towards that back corner. Okay, so the hair is still, you know, it's just so bad. It's it's not badly painted. It's just the style of all the styles to pick. Um, the eyes is what the care is what the auto um, the eyes is what the original artist asked about. The eyes don't look like they're looking at anything. So I want the eyes to squint, giving them that kind of warrior squint. And I want them to look at the viewer. Okay, so looking down there and looking at us and squinting. You also have almost zero contrast on the face. I don't know if that was intentional. I don't know if that's something you wanted to do. You have virtually no blending on the eyebrows. It just looks like it just a bad makeup job, bad hair job. There's other things you could do. The eyebrows could be sparse. The eyebrows could have a scratch on them. The eyebrows could have less of that makeup shapely Sephora look and more of a of a of like an upward slant in the in the tail of the eyebrow. So it looks a bit more like horns and a bit more dangerous. Um, and a bit more like a warrior. Just like that. Just anything. Anything other than classic church church lady beauty that sells the cookies at the church and wears a bit too much makeup for the church. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like soccer mom stuff. And I'm adding that contrast. And I don't want her face to look like an Instagram selfie. I want it to look more like she's got that thousand yard stare. Just just do something for the for the women's cause. Anything. Just don't make us look like it <laughs> bimbos with armor on. Please show that she's been through some shit. Please. <laughs> um and I just want to give her a bit of a, a frown. And um, and then I'm just going to add some sweat marks wherever she's sweat on the, uh, you know, because she's running around in the jungle in, in heavy metal armor. So I'm sure she broke a sweat. And I'm just um, grabbing a pale white and just using that on all the spots where we would have a bit of sweat. We're very light with this since we are in the shadow. And then I'm going to blend this hairline. And I'm going to try to do something else with the hair. At this point, there's like really not much I can do. But what I, what I, I don't know what I'm going to do because I have to re-render re things basically. But um, what you can do is at least, at least show it blowing in the wind or something like that um, just just to break it up and then uh, this bundle of it 
it, I would I would cut this out because this is really what's making it look soccer mom is that just that floofy look to the hair um, and then I would do something like that oops and then I would um, try to retrieve this arm and uh, just show a bit more of that uh, hair just getting cut off and then you've got that bit of whatever that is that shoulder pad floof and um, just showing more hair flowing in the wind so Okay, so just a, a little bit of something. I'm not gonna, I don't have time to render it all that much. And, um, oops, the wrong layer. Oops. So, like, this was before. Do you see what I mean by Sakrama? after just a little bit messier just a little bit less a little bit less hairspray a little bit less ovaltine is that what it's called that old <laughs> old timey hairspray and no 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 it's not called ovaltine it's called something else it's like it was glue basically um what was that boomer hair hairspray they used to use back then uh ovaltine is hot chocolate right yeah i know <laughs> What is that? It sounds like Ovaltine, that hairspray that was just insane that they used back then. The ozone killer. Yeah, what is it? Um, okay, so let's flatten the image. Um, and actually, yeah, that's fine. Let's flatten the image. I don't have all that much time. Aquanet. Aquanet. Yes. Yes, Aquanet. A little less Aquanet, man. Um, and I'm just going to reduce the opacity of my soft brush and bring in a glare. That should help complete the general look of the light environment outside of the canopy. Write that back to me, okay? Outside of the canopy. We are not adding saturation inside the canopy. That's not what we're doing. It's not what we're after. Right, so I added that glare. Duplicate the layer. I'm going to add a little bit of a, of a glare for the blade. just so the blade looks more blady and a little bit scary. She's got a blade, she's gonna get you. She's gonna get you with this blade. She's gonna fuck you right up. And um, she's gonna look good doing it. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Um, and I'm just gonna add a bit more hair strands just so it feels a little bit better. It's not just lassos that I added. Um, okay. One more hair on her face. Just to give your character some kind of situational dignity. Come on now. It's not all just, you know... <laughs> Pin up. Sometimes, sometimes it's okay to add just a little bit of respectability to these pinup girls. Um, okay, whatever. I think I'm done. Let's take a look at the before and after. There's more I could push. I could make the area behind her a bit more of a of a warm green instead of a cool green that we see here since the warm green is um flatten image since the warm green is going to be more sunlit and it's under the light source so i'm just getting my old lasso back i'm adding ah, whatever 
and I'm just going to go to here and I'm going to warm up the green by pushing it more towards the greens that have yellow in them. If, even if you pushed it this far away from green, look at that. It, it looks right. It feels right because that's the sunlit side over there, not here. Anyway, let's take a look at the before and after. Are you guys ready? I would change the eyes completely. They, they completely look... Sorry. <laughs> to break your cell ADHD. Um, I would add a bit more shadow under these eyes because they look a little bit outlined. So I would extend the shadow of the eyes um, just a little bit more. Okay, now I can do it. Before, after. So now if you want to saturate, you can saturate as a whole. Um, I need a better size for this. Okay. So before you were in a shadow and your light was coming from over there, but you had these almost orange values. If she is an orange character, you can still do that in the shadow side. Excuse me. So before, after, before, after. Pick a spot and take a look. So this is why your light environments aren't realistic. Because you guys are too scared to put characters in shadow. That's why things don't end up looking right. You, can, you guys cannot be too scared of shadows. If you are too scared to darken characters, illustrations are not for you. You have to learn that silhouettes are everywhere. And they are always happening because there are points where the light gets rejected. So if you are forcing saturation inside these shadowed areas, even if her skin was orange, at this point, I don't know. Students make all kinds of mistakes. I don't think this the skin was supposed to be orange because the face isn't orange. The face is a peach color. But, uh, but yeah, seriously, you guys cannot be too scared of shadow. Before, after. It's, it's just a small amount of change. It makes a big difference. And it's because we respected the fact that shadows need to be cooled down. I did that layer mode change with the darken and the cool blue. I made sure that the change was collective. I made sure the change was collective and the change addressed both the darkness that is required in the shadow canopy as well as the coolness that is required in the shadow canopy. And then from there, it was just delete away at what, what is getting direct light, like the arm is peachy, the thigh is peachy, there's the rim light around the hair and other areas that are exposed to the light source. And um, I don't know why my brush did that. And, uh, and that's it. So let's move on. Uh, I should probably save them as PSDs, because I have to go look for them if I don't. I didn't look for the one that I just did. Kyle, can you get me the anime one <laughs> and send it to me on Discord? Um, okay, for this one, it's actually pretty easy, and it's really similar to the one that just happened. So you've got like this mysterious um, kind of character that is in a uh, future punk. What is it? What is it called? Future punk? Um, Blade Runner? Future, future, future punk? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting for the background value. I'm bringing in explosive values. I'm bringing in dodge tool. Cyberpunk. There we go. I'm bringing in different colors. I'm just trying to do something with the background that is not, one, monochromatic, and two, dark. I don't want any of those two things. The background right now is the guiding light for this illustration. So what I'm going to do after that is select him, this main character, 
and he's gonna also get a silhouette. In this case, it really is a direct silhouette. The light is behind him, but it's direct. It's just a background. It was just a graphic kind of design background that I was adding for my character. The point wasn't the background. And then I will say, dear student, your light environment makes the background look more realistic. Uh, so you're choosing, yes, a, a standard kind of basic background, but it's not enough uh, to, I don't know what this penis is right here. <laughs> um, I think I'm just going to try to guess. It's not enough because, oh boy, I'm just going to make a fist instead of a whatever that is. Because you chose an environment that is dark around the background value. So uh, I have to adhere to that. It'll make the character look more interesting because it'll look like a really cool scene. Okay, and so now I darken that previous value with the same concept. I pick a value color that is a darkened average and I go to darken layer and I darken him with it. And then I also go to color layer and I color him with it. So I try to bring in the saturation back. Okay, so now I've created this zone where everything is against this whiter background. And I've created two zones actually, the shadowed side and the lit up side. And I'm gonna bring that back to the before, before any changes were made. And I'm gonna delete away at what I feel like I need. And that'll be done. So it's a very simple silhouette for this one. And all you need after that is the rim light and it'll look really, really cyberpunky. Before I do, I'm just gonna try to blur some of these kind of like, uh, you know, glows or whatever they are. These, these energy rays or energy bursts. I'm gonna try to get them to blur out and then I'll add some basic, basic uh, values for the glow, the bloom. I also wanna retrieve the arms but that's going to be really tricky lassoing them all. Uh, but I, I do want to make the arms a little less bright. Maybe it'll be quick. In this case, again, it is a true silhouette. And even if you intended for it to be a basic background, it didn't work because it made your character more dull. It didn't add any mystery to your character. So illustrating is all about prioritizing the light environment. Write that back to me. Illustrating is like you get this epiphany where you're like, my character is not more important than the cause. The cause is the illustration, having a thing that people can live in, a scene the character lives in. And... Um, that means they have to have a world. That means they have to have a light environment. And so right under here, we get a lot more glow. Select inverse. We get a lot more glow. Maybe I could do this with color dodge and that blue. We just get this really glowy environment and all those extra little details there, which will be separated from each other in a moment. Okay. So those were not, okay. What did I just do? Oh, okay then. So I, grab that and go to before I did that and then paste and then delete okay all right so now I'm going to actually take all this merge it together oopsie I don't want to lose my lasso um let me merge all this together and this is the one from before what I'm gonna do is 
delete away at what I feel like I need to keep. So that's going to be just keeping all this in shadow, keeping this in shadow, and then keeping a lot of stuff in shadow here until we get back some of that highlighter. And then now I can go back to the before. Okay, where it was pretty dull. It was kind of like, you know, very washed out. We have the after, but we're still not done. I'm gonna duplicate and find some rim light. This is true rim light. This is the actual way that rim light can happen in a scene. Oopsie. And it's gonna travel all through the hair. Maybe I can do this with brush instead. It's going to touch the back of his ear, the back of his shirt. It's not going to be a total outline, but it's just enough that the character kind of pops out of their background a little bit more. And you can go back and clean it up as you need. I'm just trying to hurry up. And it separates him from those arms, which sometimes, if you look at it a certain way, seem like they're growing out of his head. We don't want that effect. And now that we know what the light environment is that the face lives in, we can go in and just adjust the contrast on the face to suit us better. But first, we have to establish the large objects in this light environment. Which are... Everything here, everything you're looking at needs a little bit of rim light. And we get away with it because it's cyberpunky and it's it works. I'm going to add a little bit of that rim light around the whole edge of things, maybe in the back to show some transparency. And then I'm just going to delete away at some of that, just make it a bit more of a gradual glow out. Okay, and try not to lead the eyes out of the canvas. And then we can go in now and just kind of address what's happening in the character's contrast. So the darkness in the nostrils is non-existent. We need some, we need your dark spots at least. Good job on the cylinder of the mouth. Very nice job. Look at that, guys. And then a little bit more shadow under the eyelids or something. Just anything to kind of make the eye pop out. Coarse shadow for the nose, for the lips. Ambient occlusion for this little pocket under his jawline. And then if you feel like the skin color is too dull, it is a nighttime scene, so you do have to pick a wash, but I don't think it's too dull, but I also think it's too monochromatic still. So there's a lot you can, sorry, I'm going to take some, I'm going to drink some water. So there's a lot you can do with the colors in the background right now. Uh, but again, this is true silhouette. This is silhouette proper. This is exactly what happens in a silhouette. And I'm going to show how some of the hair texture is revealed by the rim lights. So there's like a little bump there and a bump there. And then honestly, his head is too rounded. Like what's wrong with making him have more of a, a windy kind of, um, touch to his, you know, to his hair, just something that's a little bit, you know, like a little bit all over the place. But anyway, uh, that's all up to you. That's just hairstyle and stuff like that. So for the background color, honestly, it feels just a little bit basic, but I'm just trying to follow the story of like what the original artist did. 
but I will try to do something where the background color is changed ever so slightly. Um, okay, so you know, we could just mess with the slider, really. Maybe that might be a little bit more interesting. Um, that looks just a little bit like Marvel, you know, poster. Anything really between all the cools. Um, so just like something there. Might be a bit better than that purple, which is extremely monochromatic. Um, but those are your choices. All right, let me do a complete before and after. I think that's how that's how much I need. So before, after. So again, this is a true silhouette. You actually do want the silhouette. It makes things look a bit more epic. It makes things feel a little bit more immersive. Yeah, we lost a little bit of the light on the character, just like the character that I critiqued before. We lost a little bit of light on his face, but we got back a whole lot of extra epic stuff that makes the painting look a lot more realistic. Um, so, I mean, your, your choice, your choice. If it's not realistic enough for you, there's more you can push. If this is too realistic, it's up to you if you want to keep things in your style. But this is, this is boring to look at because the light has zero presence. Everything is soft. There's no true shadow line, no true edges, no true cast shadow. Everything is softened, yet he's holding a gun. He's holding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guns. There needs to be some, something's happening where a character is holding seven guns, but it looks like a romantic love scene with super, super soft edges everywhere. You know, those like soap opera blooms that they do for soap opera characters that makes them all look like they're glowing. It's kind of what it looks like. So you need to remember that he's holding seven guns, bro. He's going to fuck you up. So you need to give him some epic epic boy lighting. Do you know what I mean? Like boy, like boys and guns and Ninja Turtles and all of that. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So I didn't add the bloom as I don't think we need it. I kind of added it in manually earlier. But I hope you understand that your illustrations need to have more light presence. You need to know a silhouette when you're looking at one. And whenever the light is behind the character, go for it. Don't be too scared of shadow. And above all, um, the background is not this static, non, non acting actor, you know, like non moving character NPC. No, the background is in the edges of your canvas. So please show it some respect. It's got a role to play. It's got a huge role to play. It's part of the great tr Trinity, which is the light environment, the light source, the background and the character, the light needs to be, the light needs access to the background. And if the light and the background are the same thing, you get a silhouette. The background is the light source. And I think it's the most effective one because it makes him look like he's dashing in front of some lights. He's doing his epic shutting gun, whatever it is, <laughs> with the guns. I don't know. I never watched Naruto. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you guys coming to the live stream today. I hope you guys learned something. If you want to submit your work for critique, it's free. You just have to go to istabrak.com, click on the subreddit icon right here. That'll take you to my subreddit. That's where I found all of these pieces to critique. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, that's where I found all my, all my pieces today. And Portrait Studio is on sale. My masterclass is on sale if you guys are interested in buying those. Please, please comment and like and subscribe and all of that. It really helps my channel grow. I'll see you guys next class on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Bye.